What has happened to Fish and Friends? Spring is finally here, and that means it's a good time to stock up on tackle. Now, why, you ask? Well, spring is a time that a lot of the companies are getting rid of the old stuff and bringing in all the new stuff. So you can often find some pretty darn good lures, you know, older lures, marked way down. And that's exactly what I did. I happened to raid some of the clearance bins at a couple of my local stores and got some pretty darn good deals on some clearance lures. Now, more importantly, I want the feedback from all of you because a lot of these I've never used before. But enough talking about this stuff. Let's go unbox it and take a look at it. All right, let's take a look at what I got. Now, my first little batch of stuff here I got from Shields. And that's a store here in Coralville, Iowa City. So if you've ever heard of the Iowa Hawkeyes, the collegiate team, the University of Iowa, they had a pretty good sale. They had the spring fishing sale and I hit up their clearance bin. Some of the stuff was kind of eh, really old stuff, but these I got. These were red ticketed, so I got them for 50% off. So four bucks, two bucks, and three bucks. Nothing too crazy special about these, but they're frogs. You can never have enough frogs. This one I liked because it had a yellow, you know, whole yellow bottom and belly. I don't know that I have many of these, maybe a couple, and definitely not a popping one. So Spro, of course, makes great frogs. You can see the tails are already trimmed up. Hooks look to be good and sharp. They are Gamakatsu hooks on there, so I'm excited to try that one. That's the Dean Rojas Bronze Eye Pop 60. Next is the old Poppin' Booyah Pad Crasher. Nothing special at all about this one. It's kind of got the white belly, which is good. Kind of got some iridescent colors looking like a shad on there, so that might be good if they're feeding on shad. But hey, for two bucks, couldn't pop, pa pop, pop pass? Couldn't pass it up for two bucks. Uh, I've used the heck out of the Booyah Frogs. I probably have the most of these just because they're so cost effective. Usually you can get these at Walmart too for like four bucks or whatever. So the Booyah Poppin' Pad Crasher. Now this one, this one I want your thoughts on because I never pulled the trigger on one. I think they're regular like 12 bucks or something, but for $4, I figured what the heck, why not? Let's try one. This is the Live Target Sunfish. And apparently impossible to get out. There we go. Now this thing has always intrigued me. It's got extremely good hooks on it. Those are those trocar hooks. Those are very, very sharp, like little needle points there. Overall, it looks really good, you know, I mean, as a bluegill profile, you know, looking at the bottom, the fish are going to see it like that, that floating, that looks very bluegill-like, and you know, if that's a, you know, an easy meal, a bluegill dying on top, those babies get munched. The part that I'm not sure about this, and this is the feedback, I posted a picture of this on Instagram, and I had a bunch of people saying that the hookup ratio on this is awful. Now, I wonder if that's because when the fish come to bite it like this and they hit that tail, that tail's kind of hard, and that's only going to get in the way of these hooks. I don't know if that's the deal. I mean, the, the body's good and soft. But when you compress it, there's not a ton of room there. The hooks are turned up, which I do like. So I don't know. I'm not sure what about this style it is. You know, I'm a big proponent of having the tails, the, the legs here, being able to move out of the way. You can't do that. With, with the tail here, it's not going to move out of the way of the hooks. So I don't know if that's part of it. I don't know. Let me know your feedback on this if you've ever used one of these and what you think about it. Now, the other thing that I didn't like, I took it out and was looking at it earlier. When you kind of squeeze this together, this thing comes apart. So I don't know if water's going to get up in there easy. I don't know. I'm not sure about it. I'm going to give it a fair chance and try it. But comment below and let me know what you think of the old Live Target Sunfish. Pretty cool looking. All right, moving those out of the way. They had Berkeley Fire Line. And they might have had all the Berkeley lines on sale. I don't remember. I didn't really need line. I just bought a bunch of it. But... Uh, I had tried the fire line back in the day and I stocked up on some of this because I'm going to set up a spinning rig dedicated 100% to the drop shot. I've told you all that's something I want to work this year. So couldn't pass up some of this half off. Um, I got the 10 pound. It's in like the smoke gray black color there. Looks pretty cool. Good thin diameter. It's the ultra eight, which I like for the, you know, the real finesse stuff. From what I remember in the past, I had good luck with it. So going to try this. Let me know if you all like the Berkeley fire line. Looks pretty good. Sticking with the Berkeley theme, uh, Shields had the, all the Chapos on sale, I believe, for $6.99 is what I got it for. So I picked up another, uh, the 120ones. Uh, a while back, I kind of did a video on some of the plopping stuff. This, the Savage Gear one, the plopping sunfish deal. But I am excited to use this one. I've heard from a couple people that, you know, this tail is so much bigger. It makes a completely different sound than the Whopper Plopper. Um, in my kind of initial thoughts video, I talked about the hooks on here not being as you know heavy duty as on the, the Whopper Plopper, but you can see here, these are the Fusion 19 hooks, and those are really good hooks. They're good and sharp, you know, don't get me wrong there, I just thought they felt a little bit lighter wire, but as long as you, you have those on the right setup, you're not using too heavy and stiff of a rod, they shouldn't be a problem. You know, those are good hooks, so certainly wasn't trying to bad talk the old Chapo before. I am gonna be fishing both of these. I have the shad color and this black. 
Certainly going to fish the heck out of them and let you all know what I think, how they compare to the Whopper Plopper. So that's the Chapo 120. Shields had a bunch of different sales on soft plastics. I believe all of the Zoom stuff was 30% off. I have something special planned for these. Post-spawn, fishing a weightless trick worm can be killer, but I wanted to go with this bubblegum color, something, you know, unusual, different that the fish don't see, and I want to fish one of the rigs out of... Hold on, let me grab it. Oh, where did I put it? In one of these. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, here it is. Had to go to my old tackle box to get this. If you missed my old video where I unboxed uh, my old tackle box and the stuff in there, I'll link that up here in the top corner. But this was something that I found in there. And in this book, it gives you some different ways to rig worms. And there's some pretty cool, unusual things that I hadn't really heard about in here. So I want to try these specifically on one of those rigs and kind of do an old school challenge with some of these things in here. Some of the stuff from way back in the day that I fished when I was just a young lad. Put that on here and see what they do. So that's the old... Zoom Trick Worm and Bubblegum, 20 pack, 30% off I think. All right, next up, now these three were not on sale at all, I paid regular price, but I listen to all of you out there, and a lot of times, you know, people tell me things they want to see, and I don't really think about it until I see them, oftentimes like, ah, should I buy it, should I not? The Dark Sleeper, this is something that I paid regular price for, but I've had a ton of people ask me about them. You can see there, Mega Bass makes these, they're a pretty cool looking, you know, kind of goby bait that goes on the bottom. What's cool about it is it's not a swim bait. It does have that swim bait profile, but there's a hook hit up in here. You can actually see it better on this version. There's a hook here and this fin, this soft plastic fin. Let's just take one out. There we go. So for all of you that have never fished one of these, I've never touched one. It's pretty cool. It's got two soft fins here, you know, the soft plastic. So in case you're going over vegetation, whatever, they're not supposed to get hung up. But you can see it splits there and exposes that hook. Now, a lot of people think these are, you know, supposed to be like a little swim bait. You swim it, but they say you're supposed to fish this like a jig. You know, it falls down on the bottom. You hop it just like you would a jig. Short pops, drag it. I'm interested to see how these do. I have never fished one, never even held one. This is the first that I've taken it out of the package. Pretty cool looking little bait. But I have had a ton of people ask me about these, what my true honest opinion of it was. I couldn't give it. Never fished one. So I picked a couple of these up for all of you. Test it out. I'll let you know what I think. Next up just happens to be a frog. Now, my man John, he has been on me for I don't know how long to pick up one of these. He knows I love frog fishing. Um, he's extremely into frog fishing, and he swears by these. So, John, if you're watching, I think you'll be happy and surprised to see that I finally got one of the Scum Frogs, the Weedless Trophy series. Let me know if you've all fished these. I have never fished any of the Scum Frogs at all. They are super goofy looking. I don't know anything about them. They do have owner hooks. I can see the hooks are turned up, but I don't know. It is a weird looking little body. They do have the legs that are already cut down to size, so I like that. Let me know. I don't have any experience with these at all. Hey, look at that. It even gives you a little tip. When fish strikes, wait two seconds before you set the hook. A little delay. Cool. Pretty cool. Uh, excited to try those out. Let me know what you all think of the old Scum Frog trophy series. All right, clear all this out of the way into the bag. Now, this is a story you are all probably familiar with. There it is. I got some uh, good deals on stuff here. Now these, they had, for whatever reason, this color. Walmart is so weird because they're random and only have like certain things on sale, but they had the small. This is the new Toad Runner Jr. Now, I'm a fan of the, you know, the plopping style frogs, the, the Sprinker Frog and the regular Toad Runner, but I felt the Sprinker was a little bit better and I don't know if it was because of the size or the body. So with these new smaller ones, I was interested to see how they would do. Pretty cool looking little profile, same as the regular ones, but this is the junior size. I think Walmart had this particular one, this one color, the black midnight color, on sale for four bucks. So I grabbed the last one. Also in here, I hit the uh, the clearance bin, picked up a couple of these. They had these little trailers on sale for a buck each. A little yum crawdad, some green pumpkin to go on the back of jigs. Dollar each, I figured, yep, why not? We're going to grab some of those. Now, this store was pretty cool. Now, remember how I was saying the, the University of Iowa, we have uh, here in Iowa City, Finn and Feather, which is a local store. Uh, but it just happens to be that when I was in there, Nate Stanley, the quarterback from Iowa, happened to be in there as well. I'm 6'1", 205. That dude made me look small. But anyway, enough football talk. Let's see what I got in here. Okay, I got a couple of these, I believe. Yep, a couple of these. And I took one out. Got these on sale for $4 each. These are the Strike King KVD Pop and Perch. So it's pretty much just like your regular frog, but you can see these are a little different. And I've seen these a number of times too. I just never really pulled the trigger on it, but I figured, you know what, for four bucks a piece, can't really pass that up. Now you can see the tails are just a little bit longer than the body. So I don't know about this. If you all have fished these stock like this, probably up here, I'm probably going to cut these down and fish it that way. 
let me know. I might leave them long, try it first, and then cut it. I don't know. But that's the popping perch. You can see it's got the uh, the cup mouth there, just like the other popping frogs. Hooks on it look to be real good and strong. I don't know what kind of hooks are on those Strike King hooks, but the hooks look to be good and durable. They're extremely sharp. You know, you do the fingernail test, those stick right in, so no worries there. Popping perch, I got a couple in uh, the kind of sunfish coloration. Moving those aside, I got a couple of these. Some of you might have noticed from my other video, I had some different handles on one of my loose reels. That is because I found these. Now, you know, setting the hook really hard like on a frog um, or when you're flipping and pitching, you know, a Texas rig or jig, sometimes they can slip off. And this is the old pair that I took it off of. The loose handles can be kind of slippery. If you're just normal cranking, you know, just doing this and going around, no worries at all. When you set the hook hard, now that I wear a GoPro and, a, you know, a chesty on my chest, I can't set the hook straight back like I used to. Otherwise, I knock the heck out of my camera. So I've kind of adopted more of a, a side 45 degree. I notice my fingers want to slip off a little bit more. So that's why I got these. These things are awesome. Now I paid $15 for these and that might seem like a lot to you. And I know that's kind of expensive just for a handle, but I wanted to try it. These were completely on clearance. Regularly, I think these are like 40 bucks, 40, $42, something like that. So I got one to try out and I tell you what, they're awesome. When you set the hook, there is no slipping off. Um, I haven't had to crank anything out of really have recovery yet, but you know, oftentimes when you reel, I reel like this, you know, my fingers are like that. But when you really need to crank on something, you grab it here and really, and I mean, you can do that hundred percent. Not a problem with it. Your hands aren't slipping off. I absolutely love them. For 15 bucks, I figured why not? The lose power cranking handle, 95 millimeter. This is not anything new at all, but these were my absolute favorite when I was a kid. And this is funny because this is kind of like the whole rattle trap, lipless crankbait thing. Um, growing up to me, every every type of inline spinner was a rooster tail to me, no matter what. Meps, didn't matter what it was, I called them all rooster tails, so I still kind of chuckle at that. People are like, I have a MEPS or inline spinner, and sometimes I kind of have to think about it. I'm like, oh yeah, like a rooster tail, you mean? I think I'm going to do a video of just these, just taking some of these out for a day and catching some stuff on them. You never know what you're going to catch on these bass, panfish. This is kind of an old grody box, kind of falling apart, but for a buck, I figured, why not? Let's do a day of rooster tails. I also got a couple white ones that I already threw in my bag, but rooster tails. How about these? Now, with the bass already starting to spawn here in good old Iowa, the spawn is going to be here and gone. Now, what better time to get some spinner baits that look like bluegill or sunfish that post spawn? Once those bass are on beds and you know they're up there laying on the beds, protecting the beds, fanning the eggs, the old pesky bluegills like to roll into town and eat some young baby bass eggs. So the bass absolutely hate hate bluegill or you know any sort of pan or sunfish around that time. So they will go crazy over them. So that's the time that I like to throw a bluegill imitation type uh, spinner bait. So that's why I got these. These were on sale I think for three bucks. Uh, normally these are, I don't know, these aren't the, the titanium, the T1 series. I think these are probably like $8, you know, so these are, you know, 50, 60% off, whatever. Uh, but a good price for them. I figured three bucks for these. Uh, I like the Terminator spinner baits. I just haven't fished them in a while because they do cost a little bit more. So look at the colors. That's the bluegill. That's a better view. That's got the orange on it there like a pumpkin seed. So the bluegill and the pumpkin seed, I like those. They're only a quarter ounce. Normally I always go with a 3.8, but... I couldn't really be picky. It was clearance bin. What else is in here? Ah, yes, I got one of these. Man, this box is all sort of old and ratty beat up, but dives to three to four feet, and this is the floating version of the shad wrap. So a jerk bait like that that will float up any sort of you know grass and vegetation. You don't want one that's going to sink and get down and coddle up in it. But if you can pop it, you know, like back in the day, I used those little rapala minnows. You can pop it over it and let that float up to the top. Pop it again. Float up to the top. Pop it again. Blow it up to the top. That's how I'm fishing these. So I picked up this thing. I think this was two bucks, three bucks, something like that. But good looking little jerk bait. Excited to try that out. How about this thing? I picked this up for four dollars. I think regularly these are like ten bucks or something. I've heard people talk about these, but I have never used one. This is a pins minnow. Uh, apparently people use these a lot for trout and stuff. This size seems pretty big. That's a three and a half inch. So I guess for bigger trout maybe. But look at that. It's supposed to have stronger, sharper hooks. I'm excited to try it. I've never used one at all. It's a jerk bait. It looks kind of like a, I don't know, a rainbow trout or something itself, but good looking little bait. I'm going to toss that around. Maybe I might get something to hit on it, but I'm thinking this might be more of a spring lure. I might try throwing it. We'll see. Let me know if you've ever thrown the pins minnow. All right, we're coming to the end here. I've only got a couple left. I picked up this. I got this for two bucks. Um, these are pretty cool little things. I think regularly they're probably like eight bucks, but this thing is already all chewed up and I think somebody opened it, but that's what it is. 
It's a little jointed shad wrap. Now this is perfect, perfect for my lake here. My local lake has a ton of shad in it. I figure that looks like a pretty good, uh, pretty good imitation there. You can see that short little kind of cup bill on it. This is a shallow diver, only dives two to four feet. But with that jointed section on it, and it has a rattle up inside there, I wanted to try it out. I haven't tried one of the jointed shad wraps for I don't know how long. And this thing's pretty light. I think, is it a quarter ounce? Yeah, quarter ounce. So I'm going to throw this on one of my lighter crankbait setups and see how it does. But I'm going to throw this around. Pretty cool looking little bait. Pretty small hooks though, so I'm going to have to be careful with those. Those are probably size sixes. Definitely looks like a real shad coming through there. And I figure with my local lake, the fish feeding on shad, should do pretty well. All right, last but not least... Pick this baby up. Now that might be a little bright for bass fishing. I don't know. Chartreuse and orange on the bottom. It might work well as a, you know, like a bluegill imitation. But I really picked this thing up thinking it might be a good pike top water. This is the Skitter V. I do have one of these in a shad color, you know, like the gray and silver old tore up box there. But I think this thing was $350 or $399, something like that. But um, I picked this one up thinking it might be good for pike. Let me know what you all think if you fish these. They do walk really well. You can see the bottom. Debo, just take it out. Don't tell the people. Show them. There we go. So you can see the bottom of it here is like a boat. You can see it's like a V-bottom boat there. That's supposed to help that walking action. I have thrown the, uh, the shad color one that I have last year, and it does walk pretty darn easily. So I'm excited to throw that. I'm probably going to have to put some bigger hooks on it if I'm uh, going to catch pike on it, but... Got a knocker in there, walks really easy. Pretty cool little lure. So comment below and let me know out of all this stuff that I picked up, which lure or lures are you most excited to see me toss? You know, I could do kind of a how-to on some of these, you know, how I use the, the frogs, what and how am I gonna use these pink worms, what do I like these trailers, whatever it is, comment below and let me know what you're the most excited to see. Frogs, I love frogs. I'm the most excited to fish these, see how they do. Some of them are not really new. Some of them are definitely different and weird, but Comment below and let me know, but that is it. It is late. I got to get going to bed. So thank you all for the support. Until next time. Really?